In this video, we're going to take a look at the brand new AWS Cloud9 Cloud IDE. Now, this is a service that's targeted to help you write, run, and debug code within the AWS environment. So it enables some very interesting um, security aspects as well as some great collaboration features. Now, this uh, is the landing page for the brand new service, and it's got that slick new AWS look um, and lots of great resources to help get you up and running. But for our purposes today, we just need to click the uh, orange Create Environment button. That takes us to the uh, wizard that will set this up. We need to provide our environment with a name. Uh, I'm a solo team, so it makes it really easy for me to uh, determine these settings. Then I click the uh, next step to go, but here's where you would enforce any naming conventions to make sure that you don't have any um, clobbering on namespace. Next up, environment settings. The defaults are pretty good for everybody, but there is some uh, uh, options and availability if you need to. Um, in my case, I'm just a solo developer working on smaller projects, so a T2 Micro works for me. Um, I love the fact that it also creates the IAM role that you need automatically, um, and you can specify some network settings like D, uh, VPC and subnet if you want to. Otherwise, the defaults for most folks are pretty good. So next step again, uh, traditional AWS summary of everything, um, but also I love this uh, four big points here to know about Cloud9, and these are important points to take away. Um, Cloud9 does not perform automatic backups. Once you click the Create Environment button here, it's going to fire up a new EC2 instance, and essentially it's then on you. So you need to use source control and you need to back up your environment. These are things you should be doing anyway, but it's nice that they warn you here. Same with you need to be regularly updating the software on this EC2 instance. Cloud9 does not do automatic updates. This EC2 instance needs to be managed just like any other. Um, of course, you've already turned on CloudTrail um, and you know that you should not be sharing your environment with untrusted users. Use the IAM user framework to share environment and collaborate. So four great tips. Um, now we're going to create our environment. And so there, within a minute, I've got access to my Cloud9 environment. Now, your mileage may vary, um, but in the few tests I've run, it has been that quick, which has been great. Um, now, anyone who's ever programmed in an IDE is familiar with what you're looking at right now. Um, Multi-pane um, environment to show you what's going on. You can close or open panes as required um, just to get a better view now. Uh, you can see the landing page. Again, great. Some easy ways to get started. Um, great little configurations here around cloud nine so you could change the theme if you wanted um, you could switch the coloring to you know the dark gray theme um, i like the default uh, though i do think the logo in the top right looks great in the um, dark gray i'm going to go with the flat light and of course, you could change your keyboard mode to something like Vim or Emacs if you're insane, um, or Sublime, which is great. And there's more settings underneath there. Uh, developers, builders, we love to configure our environments. The fact that Cloud9 supports a lot of these configurations um, out of the gate is wonderful. And what I want to show you is how easy uh, it is and simple it is to create a new AWS Lambda function. Cloud9 has done this wonderful blended workflow uh, combining local and remote um, testing and execution, um, and it's a great developer experience. I just need to click Create Lambda Function, give my Lambda function a name, and click Next. It's going to give me a bunch of uh, default runtimes. Um, they are catching up um, with the pace of innovation here. Um, so there are some challenges. I'm going to click the simple Hello World for Python 3.6 and click Next. Uh, I don't want a function trigger in this case, but you could select API Gateway and start to work that workflow out right now. Um, we're going to keep it easy. We're also going to keep the default um, memory and role be automatically generated. I love the fact that it's generating roles automatically for me. Though, of course, you could pick an uh, already existing role um, or create your own if you wanted. We simply click Next again. We see the summary, and we're going to click Finish. And now Cloud9 has fired up my uh, environment. And you can see here it's doing a little work on local functions. It's adding uh, the function remotely. Um, but I have my Lambda function here, and I can click on Run and see what happens. Let me shrink that panel. Um, and now I have a very simple uh, test environment here, a little test harness for my Lambda function. Uh, the test payload by default is an empty JSON document, and you can see the execution results. Now, if I run this, this is going to fail, but fail what nicely and fail quickly. Um, so it's looking for a key. I have the response, uh, you know, error message key one. 
key error. I uh, couldn't find this because uh, in my Lambda code, I'm looking for specific keys and I'm obviously not providing any keys here. Um, so if I uh, do add a key, uh, one, now if I run this again, I'm going to get a different error. I'm going to get that feedback loop nice and quick. I see key two is now the error because in my code, I'm actually calling out key one, key two, key three. So I will remove that code um, and I will uh, uncomment the just dump the entire event. Uh, and then I'll echo back the whole event to myself. So not a great Lambda function, but uh, I think the workflow is important here. Click run again, and you'll see uh, that I failed to save this. So standard user error, but at least I'm getting this feedback quick. If I uh, save that now, hit run, and now I have a successful Lambda function. Now that's great. I've been able to, within about a minute, fire up a new Lambda function, um, run through some basic uh, feedback loops on myself of making common mistakes, um, fixing them, getting that debug information, you know, fixing my code, running it again, getting an error, fixing my code, running it again, and off we go. So this feedback loop is wonderful. This is an environment that most uh, builders will be very, very familiar with. Um, the IDE is ex extremely flexible, has some really tight integrations into the rest of the AWS resource set, um, including code code star so you can manage your code through a proper build system or proper CICD, uh, CICD pipeline. Um, really wonderful experience so far with Cloud9. I think a lot of people are going to um, see this as their editor of choice, especially building serverless applications. The fact that you have access to the EC2 under, uh, instance underneath gives you a lot of flexibility around managing this environment. From a security perspective, I think that's wonderful. It's the same advantage of AWS workspaces, where now all of your code is uh, within a control controlled environment, I can apply IAM permissions, I can back it up, I've got visibility. Um, you'd be surprised at how big of a risk a lot of companies are running with developers um, and code on their laptops and unaware of it. Um, Cloud9 addresses that, of course, the downside is uh, it is not an offline tool, it is a connected tool. Um, but this serverless experience is, is phenomenal. I really think uh, for serverless, the serverless community, uh, Cloud9 will quickly become the IDE of choice. It's generally available today, just go into your AWS account, click on uh, developer uh, tools, and you'll see uh, Cloud9 there. It takes a minute to get up and running. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, comment below. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. Excited to see what you do with the brand new service AWS Cloud9.